by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Y todos quedaron llenos del Espíritu Santo y comenzarán a hablar en otras lenguas según el Espíritu hacía que hablaran. Tu fio alors rempli de l'Esprit Saint et exprimant à parler en d'autres langues selon que l'Esprit le donnait de s'exprimer. Vishikni bili napteneni juchem svatim azachali nubit yaziki yakim toduch dovolil. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in her or his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his or her native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Adirimus loquentes eos, nostris linguis, magnalia deo. Y todos les oímos hablar en nuestras propias lenguas de las maravillas de Dios. No les entendemos publiar en otro lado las maravillas de Dios. Fíjeme ya explicarle cajdi de nashik, blasnik, yazichi, obojik, zazazik. Que hören sie mit unseren Zungen die großen Taten Gottes. Yet, we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the Word of God. Thanks be to God. Bye. 
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Sisters and brothers, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Christ. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit, the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the creation, the spirit of truth that proceeds from the creation, that spirit will testify to me, and you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when the Advocate comes, that's the spirit of truth, the spirit will guide you in all truth. The spirit will not speak on its own, but will speak what is heard and will declare to you the things that are coming. The Spirit will glorify me, will take from what is mine, and declare, declare it to you. Everything that creates or has its mind, for the reason I told you that God will take from what is mine and declare it to you. It's the good news of salvation. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's Pentecost and it's the fire of the Spirit. After these 50 days since the resurrection celebration, we come to culminate this Easter season, remembering that the Spirit is still with us. This past week, I ran into a phrase that uh, kind of interested me. It was the banality of evil. Most of the time, when we think of evil, we're thinking of something grotesque, horrible, monstrous, villainous. But really, uh, evil wants to appear commonplace, the banality of evil. It wants uh, us to think that it's, what's going on is normal, but what's going on is evil. And, and it's that deception that, that I think uh, we all need to take a look at. You know, uh, Paul in Colossians, when he talked about evil, he said it's the principalities, the powers, and the thrones. Well, we can translate that into the corporations, the nation states, the ideologies of supremacy, Organizations that demand loyalty. Uh, those are, are perpetrators of evil in, in many cases. And so we need to get underneath that. That's what Pentecost was about. That the disciples began to detect the banality of their times. The banality of their religion and their society. You know, uh, people put a lot of uh, credit to the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the good guys. Now, the gospel paints them as bad guys. But in those days, they were the good guys. They brought the law, the faith, down to the people. And, and so the people listened to them. Uh, the disciples began to get it after the death of Jesus. That what actually the apostles calls, there's a way, a different way, a deeper view of love. And so that's why they barked, barked out of the room and shouted out a new kind of love, a love that goes beyond languages and peoples. That's the Pentecost, that they discovered the banality of the evil of their time. It behooves us uh, to recognize that evil is about deception in our day. Evil is about marketing, branding, and packaging, which we're very good at here in the United States. And, and so, <laughs> the, the, the most obvious example is January 6th. Uh, people were doing the wrong things thinking that it was right. 
evil had uh, deceived. Many of the people, the thousands went to the Capitol, the millions that were watching, uh, thought that uh, this was good, that this was right, was loyal. Uh, evil won. And, and the lie needs to be unveiled. You can also look at uh, the United States. Uh, we oftentimes pride ourselves in foreign aid. My experience of foreign aid in Africa was that the aid went to the companies and corporations in America who were providing whatever it was. They got the profits. And we need to take a look at those things and take a harder look because of the banality of evil, trying to make it look normal and, and even good. We, we talk about the environment, climate, but we love our gas guzzlers. Um, evil is deceiving us. Let's move to the church. The banality of evil in the church. What got us into all that trouble was secret agreements, confidentiality agreements that hid the sex abuse of minors. That was normal. That's what the lawyers said to do. Um, the banality of evil got us. Or <laughs> it's pretty commonplace uh, to soft pedal some of the church teachings in favor of donors. They may not want to hear some of this stuff. I remember talking to, the, to Archbishop Carlson one time. He said, if I'm feeling lonely, I, I write something about immigration and I get all kinds of letters and emails. Uh, there's things that we saw at all because it might affect the bottom line. And we don't want that bottom line affected at times. You know, we, we certainly have this horrific evil of abortion. But I believe that the harping on that evil is the banality of evil. Because it's, uh, uh, it's honing in on the act of abortion and not the causes of abortion. And the causes uh, most of us participate in, it's called greed and privilege. That's what we purport in the United States. Kind of a crazy American dream. Get to the top. Get it all. Be the power. I think that's what's underneath the act. And so evil has us divided in our own church. The banality of evil. We need what the gospel says today that advocate who guides us to the truth. May this Pentecost help us to, to open our eyes so we can unveil the lies and, and the banality of evil, the commonplace of it, the normality of it, expose it for what it is, not God, not good. Let's pray to that Holy Spirit might continue to fire us with the truth and love. And a word for the children. Sure you know, the uh, this Feast of Pentecost was a time when uh, the disciples were all in this upper room and they were scared because Jesus got killed, and they were afraid they were gonna get killed. So they're all in this room, and 
suddenly uh, they got it, what Jesus was trying to do. And when they got it, they were just overjoyed. They burst the doors open, ran out into the city, and gave a shout for Jesus. Don't be afraid to give a shout for Jesus. As we conclude this Easter season, one last time, we again remember our baptismal promises. I invite you to respond, we do, as a sign that we are committed as a community to renewing our promise to live our baptismal responsibilities and supporting one another, the call of the Holy Spirit. Do you recognize God, the Holy One, as author of the cosmos? who recreates us in the divine image and is sovereign over all creation and all time? We do. Do you accept Jesus as the Word made flesh, who, one in being with the God of all, redeemed us from our bondage to sin and death and is the model for how we can live our lives? We do. As a follower of Jesus, do you pledge to pray daily, to meditate on the Word of God, to build community, to live a life marked by hope, and to celebrate the sacraments with faith, especially the Eucharist. We do. Do you acknowledge your need for compassion and forgiveness, and your vocation to be compassionate and forgiving to those who might offend you? We do. Do you commit yourself to a gospel spirit of poverty and detachment, to resist the spirit of consumerism and materialism, to live a life of generosity and to exercise a preferential option for the poor? We do. we do. Do you dedicate yourself to seek justice in your personal interaction with others and in the world at large, to help others in their needs and in their aspirations, to work to end oppression and to reject evil? We do. We do. do you believe the Holy Spirit is at work in our midst, that the church is universal? that we are graced with a cloud of witnesses to the love of God, that sin is forgiven, that God's love for all creation is unending, and that life is everlasting? We do. We do. This is our faith. This is a faith in the church. We're proud to profess, profess it in Jesus Christ. So let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
our responses, Spirit of God, abide with us. Spirit of God, God, abide with us. us. For the church on this day of Pentecost, as the glorified Christ sends the promised Holy Spirit, that the strong wind of the Spirit's coming may surge through the upper room where we have waited to kindle in each of us the Spirit's holy fire. Let us pray. Spirit, Spirit of God, God abide, abide with us. For the faithful commissioned by the Spirit to be a ferment in society for the reign of God, that the Spirit's gifts of fortitude and joy may make them strong friends of Christ, able to stand up for the demands of justice, life, and peace. Let us pray. Spirit, Spirit of God, God abide, abide with us. us. That the Spirit may be an anointing of comfort to the sorrowful, healing to, to the sick, calm to the anxious, forgiveness to sinners, and refreshment to us all on our pilgrimage way. Let us pray. Spirit, Spirit of God, God abide, abide with us. That inspired by the Holy Spirit, we will bring Christ's love, mercy, forgiveness, and the joy of the gospel to all those we meet. Let us pray. Spirit, Spirit of God, God abide with us. For who, what else do we want to pray? Oh God, may we always be aflame with that Holy Spirit so we might be able to bring the warmth of your love to others, especially in these times when it's normal to not know evil. We ask this through Christ, our God. Amen. Amen. Therefore, 
overcome with passive joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly power of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory, and the now and ever. Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of our God be with you always. And with your spirit. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace that you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that the spiritual food may gain an abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our God. Amen. Amen. Again, a reminder about the Orstasen Catholic Appeal. We're appealing to your generosity. So we might be able to uh, continue to serve those in need. We will be uh, getting live streaming in June, so we'll keep you posted on that. God be with you. Amen. 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 May Almighty God bless you. The Creator, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's all go in peace. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.